And um, we had, to, when I say we, I, I only got as far as the Lord of the Tars, but I, I love watching the Rabbitohs play. And I saw this bloke, Steve Maven, play since he was that big. Or was Mavo ever that big? I don't think Mavo was ever that big. He came out that big. But Mavo, I know, well, firstly, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Maven. Uh, what I often say to you as a friend of yours that, that I, I get a little bit... Um, you know, I, I don't like the fact that when people remember you, they remember that day in Canberra. Um, who, everybody remembers that day in Canberra, those who are old enough? Yeah? Um, mate, um, but I, I, you know, I don't like the fact that people remember you for that, when you played so much great football, not only as a kid at Botany, but then, of course, with the Rabbitohs and, and, a, and a couple of seasons with, with the Dogs. I, I'm going to ask you about that game, though, because people ask me often about it. What happened? Well, firstly... Um, Talking about last week's heartbreaking loss, I know all about that being involved in one back in 87. I got a bit of an eye infection, I think it was from crying after what Minnie did to us, because I was at the game as well. So, so yeah, I'm a mad South supporter. So I understand the hurt that that, that caused that loss and that. And uh, But yeah, it goes back to um, that year I uh, came into grade as a, as a teenager. I was 19 that year and I, I played centre all year. and. Um, I didn't find this out till later that uh, Ross Harrington was our winger that year. And uh, I was having a beer with a mate of ours, uh, Cole Burke, who's passed away now. He used to be assistant coach to George Piggins. And he told me the story of what happened. He said, when Ross got injured, George Piggins went up to um, Phil Blake and he said, Phil, we need a winger. I want you to play wing for Ross Harrington. And uh, Phil Blake said, get stuffed. He said, if I've got to play wing, I'm going to pull out injured. So... That's how the story went, and uh, so next came off the rank was me, chucked onto the wing, and the rest was history. Uh, Peter Jackson kicked me a few balls, and uh, they got fumbled, and the Raiders were leading 16-0 after, I think it was 15 or 16 minutes, and uh, I got the hook. But, uh, so after that, Peter Jackson, who I hated after that, and I suppose a lot of staff supporters did too, for kicking me those balls, I always thought Peter Jackson, he was a smart ass. I didn't like him, but just goes to show that you can't judge someone until you actually meet him. Because I got to meet him years later, and uh, he's passed away now as well. It turns out he was a really nice bloke, Jacko, and he's, he's obviously a great footballer, played for Queensland and Australia. And I said to him, what happened that day? And he said, well, mate, I kicked you the ball and you dropped it. So then I just thought I'll kick it to you a couple more times. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's the way it went. I mean... I, I wasn't a winger at that stage. I grew up actually playing front row all my junior career. But when I got graded at South, we had a great forward pack, Les Davidson, Mario Fennick, Ian Roberts. So there was no spot there for me. So I ended up in the centres and then on the wing. So that's how it went. Mate, uh, oh, the, this is the great part. The, the, the great part of the whole myth of that day, of the fairy tale of that day, if, this is what everyone will want to ask you. Everybody believes that at half-time, you went home and your mother told you to go back. What happened then? <laughs> well, you know, like I said, I was a teenager and, and, you know, I've got to take some responsibility for what happened that day. My preparation wasn't that good. You know, I, I, I left to go to the game like, in, like it was any other game. And when I got to SCG, I realised that there's 50,000 people trying to get into the ground. So I was a little bit late. And, yeah, so when, anyway, when I got hooked after 16 minutes... Um, I, uh, I, I left the ground, and um, at that stage I was playing for um, Alexandria Rovers, and on the way home I called into the, the Cauliflower Hotel, I walked into the Cauliflower Hotel, and a couple of folks went, what the hell are you doing here, the game's still going. I said, oh, you know, it's a long story, but, so yeah, but anyway, in the end I did go home, and um, the players, uh, a couple of folks, David Boyle, Ian Roberts, they come and got me, and took me to the function after the game, and you know, because I was pretty inconsolable, as you can imagine. But, you know, it was 25 years ago this year, and I've learned to deal with it, but, you know, I've, I've said this before, I can understand the hurt it is to lose any game for South, let alone be eliminated in a sudden-death semi-final. So, you know, 